So schema microdata, making the most of what's available. Microformat data. Microformat comes in many ways, you know. Uh, there's the H card, the uh, uh, extension friend network, RDF, Open Graph, and so on. So many. There's so many that even I myself don't know everything. Now, there are a few here that I would highlight because they are used the most. I already assume that many people in the audience uh, already know what microformats are. They know what schema.org is. So we're not going to go through the definitions anymore. Now, just historically, Open Graph was made by Facebook. Uh, microdata was mainly uh, initialized by the uh, WhatWG group that also made some of the standards for HTML5. JSON LD was mainly conceptualized by W3C. W3C is also known as the organization that made the standards for HTML uh, uh, and also partially HTML5. Schema.org was mainly started by Google, which is based a lot on microdata. So they, they come in the exact same format. Uh, what Google did was uh, uh, made all the different schemas uh, that could be defined uh, that Google may be looking at now or maybe in the future. <laughs> so why use microdata? Microdata, does it really improve ranking? If you read around, ask Google people, all of them would say it doesn't. And even SEOs would agree it is known to not contribute to ranking. So why do you even work on it? So because, because the main reason is it improves the search entry results page appearance. And when the appearance looks good, it increases your click-through rates. Some may debate. In some cases, it could decrease it. And another reason is it occupies more screen real estate because a typical search engine result is just a title description and URL. Now, if the appearance looks better, there's, you know, there's breadcrumbs, there's site links, there's maps, there's images, there's thumbnails, there's reviews, ratings. It makes it push down your competition a lot more. If it increases click-through rates and click-through rates is known, to partially improve ranking, then using microdata may improve ranking indirectly. Now, since microdata kind of gives better context to what your content is all about, then it gives Google a better understanding of what your site is about. And if Google gets a better understanding of what your site is about, then it could possibly also help in ranking. So even though just adding microdata does not contribute to ranking per se. The effect of using it could indirectly uh, help in your ranking. So what I'm going to go through is several implementation tips. First thing is I'm going to call SEO shadowing. Shadowing is simply check what rich snippets your competitors have. And then once you see your competitors have some type of rich snippets, identify the related schemas and implement them on your site. Simple as that. Spying. <laughs> Spying on your competitors. Now, uh, the good thing is this is within SEO Clarity. Uh, there are ways to view your competitors, what type of image results, answer boxes, local listings appear. Uh, so this could also help you find what your competitors are currently using. Now, microdata implementation tips. Again, schema or JSON LD. Schema.org, if you go there, they have comprehensive documentation, they have a lot of examples, and they are sponsored by Google and the other search engines. So they know you know that you are following a standard that they are supporting. In JSON LD, they also uh, search engines also follow that format. But the good thing about it is it's an easier format that's, that developers could implement. And, and since all of these uh, attributes are not included in the HTML itself, it could be externalized in a separate file, then you help improve page speed. And if you help improve page, page speed, that is also a ranking factor. 
So there are several tools out there. There's validation tools, Google, Bing, Yandex, and StructuredData.org. Basically, you could enter your URL and it's going to find uh, issues, problems, or validate if you did everything correctly. You could usually do this by one page at a time, so it's going to be a bit difficult. Now, there are other tools there uh, that you could enter multiple pages. Uh, Syn up uh, schema scanner, uh, Google Search Console, and also the Google Site Search command. So the schema, uh, the Syn up schema scanner, it doesn't really validate it like the validation tools above, but you could simply enter your domain and then it's going to scan multiple pages of your site and it's just going to say, say, yes, it has schema markup or not. It's just like a yes or no check. Now, the Google Search Console, once you sign up your site in there and it scans your site, finds some problems, then you could get alerts and messages saying that, oh, you have an issue here. Now, the Google Site Search command, I linked to a blog post wherein uh, John Mueller, uh, a Google engineer, specifically said in an interview uh, or in a web-based uh, hangout, saying that the site search command in Google should appear, uh, should display the different uh, uh, rich snippets uh, a website supposed to have. In my experience, I haven't seen this working a lot. I haven't seen a great example of this. Uh, so I, I am not very dependent on that, but I thought of mentioning it because Google said it. Tools for generation, so there's tools that could help you build uh, schema markup code or uh, create JSON-LD files. Uh, and you could go through them. They usually have a wizard. They're telling you what type of uh, information you are sharing, and it creates the code for you. So other implementation, implementation tips. The answer box. The answer box uh, is one of a type of a knowledge graph type of rich snippet um, that one part of the best practices to make this happen is to apply proper schema. Now, the main thing that I want to talk about here is some claim, many claim actually, that the answer box improves click-through rates. It attracts more attention. It occupies a larger screen real estate you have the opportunity to rank above the number one result because the answer box result is not always the first organic result. I've seen it as low as 10, but it's the source of the answer box. It appears above the number one organic listing. But there are some that say the answer box decreases click-through rates. And the main reason is if, if, you, if you have a page that has general facts, Google's just going to display it. Or if you have a dictionary definition or a calculator, Google's just going to do it for you. It's not even going to pull, pull any website. So if you tend to target some of these types of results as keywords, Google might just be stealing away that traffic from you. But there are some times where the answer box, you are the source of the answer box. And even if you are the source, it's now a question if Google if users click on the answer or not, if click on the source of the answer or not, because if they don't click on it, um, then you're going to lose out traffic because sometimes the answer already satisfies the user's question. They don't need to click on the source. So you're losing out on traffic, uh, which that traffic is essential uh, because the conversion points are on your website. Now, if assuming this is true, that the answer box decreases CTR. What are the advantages of, of optimizing for the answer box or not? Should you still continue to optimize it for not or not? Now, here's the problem. If you don't have an answer box and your competitor doesn't have an answer box, then there's no change. But if your competitor has an answer box and you don't, there's going to be two types of users, users that like clicking the source of the answer box and users that don't. Assuming that uh, there are more users that don't click on the answer box, so there is a decrease in traffic, everything decreases, 
But for the few amount of people that do, like click on the answer box, they're going to go to your competitor because they're the one that has it. Now, if you have the answer box and your competitor doesn't, even if more people don't like clicking on it, for the few amount of people that will, you will get the traffic. So, people say, people that say that the answer box decreases CTR don't even optimize for it. I disagree with that because if your competitor does, then they're going to gain the small amount of traffic that still exists instead of you getting it. So might as well do it before your competitor does. And this is specifically in SEO Clarity. When you do sign up and you go to Rank Clarity, monitoring your rankings, you could also see the different types of uh, rich snippets that appear and included in there is the answer box. You could track answer boxes uh, within SEO Clarity. Uh, now, if you're tracking the ranking and you see a keyword that appears in the answer box, specifically in Google, I, I sorry, in SEO Clarity, you could associate that page, uh, the keyword to the to a, to the page that is ranking, and then you could track the ranking of that the traffic of that page for its organic performance. That way you could see how much help the answer box is giving you. Uh, another tip here, not sure if it's really a good example or not, but don't over-optimize. If you over-optimize uh, your microdata, Google doesn't like it. Google says it actually makes it worse. Uh -huh. When you do receive this presentation or if you download it, you could see two links going to two uh, different uh, blog posts where um, people have shared um, the manual actions they have received uh, because of using uh, microdata excessively. Probably a good example is, of this is there are some sites that used to add uh, reviews and ratings uh, markup even on pages that is not selling a product or service just because they wanted the stars appearing on, on the search results. So only use the schemas that are applicable, that make sense, and don't over-optimize it. Now, about the open graph, in Facebook, it's always good to use the op open graph uh, microdata because it helps in sharing Whenever people share something on Facebook, you get to control the title, the description, and the image that appears when it is shared. But in some cases, uh, it may not look good in Twitter. And let's say you have a large Twitter following. And you also don't want to optimize it on Twitter alone because if you optimize it within 140 characters or within the image dimensions that are ideal for Twitter, it may not look good on Facebook. So if you both have a large following on Facebook and Twitter, then you might as well use Twitter cards as well, not only open graph. Uh, once a page has Twitter cards and Twitter crawls through your site and they see the Twitter cards, it's going to prioritize the information in the Twitter cards. If the Twitter cards doesn't exist, then it's going to go back to the open graph uh, protocol. So only if you want to differentiate them, uh, then use Twitter cards. Another tip is look at all possibilities and find applicable schemas. Here is a screenshot of different possible results. This was compiled by Dr. Pete Myers of Moz. And uh, this is not a result that we typically see where all type of results would, would appear. Uh, this was Photoshopped and stitched together of different results. Uh, and he labeled them on his blog posts. Uh, to give you a better idea of what these are all about. Once you see something, once you look at all the possibilities and you see something that could be applicable to your website, then find the related schemas and then optimize them. Uh, if you're looking for that blog post, just search Megaserp, a visual guide to Google, and you could find Dr. Pete's post there. Now, this was written in 2013, I believe. Uh, if you want a more latest one, there is one by, that's on SEMrush, and you could search for this, and this was in 2016. So it might be a bit more uh, recent because Google likes changing you know, the SERPs all the time. So that is one result, and if you're going to look at it, 
uh, again, in SEO Clarity, there are many ways to monitor all of this uh, within your Rank Clarity. So other tips, image dimension sizes. If you want to make your images ideal for sharing, uh, there is a blog post, ideal image sizes for your social media posts. Uh, if you visit this site, all the posts are in there, all the image dimensions. So when you're sharing something and you're going to optimize your open graph tags, you could use the appropriate sizes. Whenever you have images, it's nice to add some calls to action, arrow, circles, text, GIF animation, play buttons to attract a user to click on them. So as a summary, uh, these are the most popular uh, microdata, open graph schema and JSON. S developers tend to like the JSON because uh, it's easier to implement and improves page speed. SEO shadowing is like spying on your competitors, what kind of rich, uh, uh, rich formats they have, rich snippets they have, and find the related schemas and optimize for them. There are several tools that I've shared in this presentation for validation checking and for generating uh, schema microformats. And you could go back to that slide and visit them all. Uh, answer box click-through rates. Some people question that. Some say that it decreases your click-through rates. But in my opinion, if you optimize for it, you still get the, the better situation over your competitors. Do not over-optimize. It could hurt you. And use open graph tags for social media sharing. But if it looks bad on Twitter and Twitter is important for you, then you could use Twitter cards. Check all possibilities of rich snippets. Find the associated schema. Optimize for that and optimize image dimensions. And add some calls to action so that you can get more traffic that way. And that ends up my presentation. If there's any questions, go ahead, tweet me. Thank you very much, SEO Clarity, Clarity 16. This is Ben Jariola, SEO consultant for eReach, SEO director at Myers Media Group.